Earlier this year, the Royal Society of Chemistry decided they would mark the Olympic year by creating a special molecule that would look like the Olympic symbol, the five rings. They commissioned a professor at the University of Warwick to work and make this molecule. Because it's a new molecule, it hasn't got a name. So they called it Olympicene, which is quite a nice name. Once it had been made, and I presume it was a sort of whitish powder, they then worked with scientists in the IBM lab in Zurich to actually produce an image so you can see the shape of the molecule, which is really quite a good feat of science to image the molecule. I looked at the image, really excited, and then I suddenly felt disappointed because the rings were not linked in the way that the Olympic rings ought to be linked. I then thought, could you actually make the real Olympic rings where you have molecules linked together? It turns out that people have made molecules of rings linked together, like these two rings here. They even have a name. They're called catenanes. And the first time that they were made, they took a molecule, which is essentially a straight string of carbon atoms and carbon hydrogen atoms, with reactive groups at the end so you can react them together and make a ring. If you dissolve these molecules in solution and get them to react, if the solution is concentrated, different molecules just stick together and you get long chains. But if the solution is very dilute, the molecule will, as it were, bite its own tail and form a ring. So now you have a solution of rings. You then add some more material, but now more concentrated, and hope that one or two of these molecules poke through the hole so that when you add the reagent to make them react, they will react together and you will get two linked, one inside the other. When I was a student in the late 1960s, after a huge amount of work, some people managed to make a very small amount of catenane like this, with two rings joined together. More recently, chemists in France came up with a much cleverer way of making catenanes in which you could make them in quite large quantities. You begin with a solution of metal ions, like copper or something like that, and you have the same sort of long molecules, but this time you have some sort of group in the middle which will bond onto the metal. And so you bond, first of all, one, one of these molecules onto the metal, and then you bond on a second one. So now, if you imagine, you have these two long straight molecules joined together by the metal atom. You then do the reaction which joins, if I can do it, which joins the two rings together. And it's easier to do it with a molecule than it is with this piece of rubber. And then you've got the two rings joined together. <coughs> Oops. <laughs> then you've got the two rings still joined with the metal. And the final stage, you do a bit more chemistry and the metal comes out. So now, instead of relying on chance, you've got the linked rings because the metal acted as a sort of mould to join these things two together. And you can imagine that you could keep on doing this and make a longer chain of rings. You may not have realised, because I didn't realise until a few days ago, the Olympic rings, although it has one ring under another, these two are not joined together. So in fact, there's a chain of rings. There are five rings in the Olympic symbol. And the problem is that, and I still haven't thought how to do this, is that if you use one of these copper atoms, you're always going to get an even number of rings. So I could imagine how you can make two rings, four rings, six rings, but I haven't worked out yet how you don't make five. So I think that's a problem which I should leave for the students like you to solve. I've given you the basic idea, like any good teacher. Now I leave it to the students as their homework exercise to work out how you'd make five rings in a row.